Hello, good evening, and welcome to Crestview High School, where tonight on WOSN, we've got the season lid lifter for the 2022 season as the Parkway Panthers visit the Crestview Knights. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Nate Garlock, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Crestview. And Nate, it's always fun to get the high school football season started. Both sides filled with tons of optimism for the 2022 season. Both sides looking to uh, you know, get a win here tonight in this rivalry contest and, and hopefully put together a, a campaign that sees them in the playoffs later this fall. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like the preparation begins the day after the last season ends. and It's been a long winter, spring and summer for both these clubs, especially for this Crestview team that lost a heartbreaker last year yeah. in the playoffs, are really expecting to take a big leap forward as a team this year, leaning on you know Isaac Klein and their quarterback Carson Hunter, expecting those guys to kind of take these guys to the next level. And Parkway, though, they're expecting the same thing. You know, when you listen to their coaching staff, they really expect that this Parkway team is going to cause some surprises in the MAC this year. Yeah, and they're, they're a Parkway squad that has a lot of young faces or maybe not young as much as just has, hasn't had a ton of varsity experience. They've got, you know, seven juniors on the starting lineup in the offense, um, things like that that we'll look into when we come back. We'll take our first time out and when we return we'll have first half action for you here on WOSN. Back here at Crestview High School as the Parkway Panthers make their entrance as they get set to play their rival, the Crestview Knights. And they, it's always fun to start the season with a nice rivalry contest. There's not a lot of distance between these two schools. It's become a week one tradition that they will play each other in week one since I think the 2003 season that uh, these two schools have met out, except for the 2020 season, uh, in, the, in week one. And it's just a nice, fun way to start the season. You've got pack stands on each side. It's a fun way to start the 2022 season. Yeah, it is. And it's really seemed like oh, yo, over the entire area, week one has kind of become that rivalry. Teams have really started to look to try to, you know, go regionally as the conference has expanded and, and teams have moved around a lot. They've tried to hone in on week one kind of for that friendly rivalry. and It gives week one just that little bit of extra for both teams. We talked with uh, Crestview head coach James Lotzenheiser and Parkway head coach Joel Hinkle earlier in the week, and, and they gave us some keys to the game of what really they expect or, or what they think they need to do to grab a win here to start the season off right. Uh, when you look at both sides, what, what are you focusing on tonight that's going to be the keys to success for each squad? Well, I think when you look at both these teams and what they want to do, this is all going to come down to those front seven. The, those guys on the line, what they're able to do. Parkway feels like they can really lean and even though they may not have the biggest line, they feel like those guys are athletic enough. They can find advantages, get in the backfield, and that's going to be huge against a Crestview team that really, really wants to lean on Isaac Klein this year. And when you look at Crestview, Parkway won, won the toss, by the way, it elected to defer until the second half. When you look at Crestview, who will begin on offense, things are going to run through Carson Hunter and Isaac Klein. Hunter, the senior quarterback, Isaac Klein, the junior your running back pretty much the two guys that have any experience coming back offensively for the Knights. Yeah, you know, we've said, mentioned it multiple times, but I mean, I, I really do think that Isaac Klein is going to be a difference maker. Kind of came on late last year, really saw his stock climb there in that playoff game and that uh, close loss to Lima Central Catholic last year in the first round. And I think Luke, going into this offseason and, and everything that's been prepping, it's been getting him ready to be the workhorse of this team. And, you know, when they start keying in on him, Carson Hunter, a very capable quarterback. They have some good receivers. Callum Putnam is one, an excellent route runner in, in his own right. So they have other assets, but if they can get Klein going, it really opens up a lot of other things for them. And, and that's when you look at Crestview last year, they were nearly identical pass yards a game, rush yards a game. They want to be balanced, but you got to establish that run first before you can go to the air. Absolutely. I think this first possession is going to be big. You know, Parkway, they want to come out. They want to establish that, hey, we're here to play. We can shut you down. We can slow you down. So that a big defensive stance is going to go a long way here on this opening possession for Parkway. So Parkway in their white road uniforms, black helmets, Crestview in the all blues. As we get set to kick off the 2022 season here on WOSN, this week one lid lifter. Again, I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Nate Garlock as Parkway will tee up the football as Brady. Bruns will put the ball on the tee and get set to kick here in this opener between the Mac and the Northwest Conference. 12 minutes on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. Bruns puts the ball in the air and we are underway. Caught inside the 10-yard line. They'll bring it here to the near sideline. And Isaac Klein cut down just shy of the 20 yard line and that is where Crestview will begin their first drive of the season. It'll be interesting to see Crestview as they come out where they try to go first. You know, we've mentioned there in the pregame leading up all of this, Isaac Klein. You got to know Parkway's expecting that as well. 
Crestview throw in some wrinkles, try to see if they can't get some misdirection going, or are they just going to hand it to the workhorse and see if they can't find some holes early? Starting offensive line for Crestview from left to right. Preston, Preston Crasher, Evan Walls, Wesson Ludwig, Donovan Reith, Garrett Yinger. Carson Hunter, the quarterback, will be in a shotgun with Klein behind him. They'll send Jarrett Harding and Kellen Putman here to the near side. They'll send two wide receivers out to the left as well. Hunter in the shotgun, looking at the 4-3 defense. Takes the snap and will hand off to Klein. He'll run off right tackle, breaks one tackle, and a big stick there by the Panthers. Logan Green with the hit, and uh, that's a, a nice tone setter there for the Panthers defensively. It is, but what you saw coming out is that option read that they had that time. Carson gives it to Isaac Klein as he goes inside. Carson Hunter, though, a capable runner in his own right, so Parkway's got to be disciplined to make sure they don't let him spring free. Cressy will keep two receivers here to the near side, and he'll send Hunter back into the shotgun. Klein riding sidecar to his right. Second and nine for the Knights. Hunter turns left, fires to Harding in the flats far side, makes one man miss, gets to the outside and will get just shy of the 35 yard line. Just an easy pitch and catch there on second down. Nate. It was a good block on the outside by his receiver, gave him a little bit of extra room. Crestview able to make this a third and manageable. That's one of those just kind of feel out what Parkway's doing defensively, right? You, just, you're gonna, you can't go broke taking a profit. We'll see what they do. Hunter in the shotgun once again. Third and six for the Knights. Back to pass, looking right, fires to Eggleston, caught it at the 40, and he is brought down. That's going to be enough for a first down for the Crest Unites. So they take three downs, doesn't matter. They move the chains and keep that drive alive. Just an easy pitch and catch that time. Edelston just found the soft spot, was able to sit down, got enough yardage, knew where the sticks were, picked up the first down. Just an easy pitch and catch. Uh, about as simple as it gets in the passing game that Cressy said, hey, we've changed some things up in the passing game that they hope will open things up more here in the 2022 season as Hunter will go back in the shotgun. Takes the snap, reads, gives to Klein. He'll run off right tackle. He's got some room at the 50. Brought down in the open field at the 45-yard line is Parker Lyons. The freshman linebacker for the Panthers makes a touchdown saving tackle. Great block by Kellen Putnam downfield to give Klein some extra space. And he, there wasn't a whole lot of room on that sideline, but Klein didn't need it. Was able to weave through and pick up another first down. Gets into the Panther territory for the first time here this evening. Ball at the 44-yard line with 10 minutes remaining in the first quarter here on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Hunter in the shotgun once again. Two receivers to the left side. Takes the snap. He'll turn left. Fake the handoff. Hunter just a lob throw to Eggleston in the flat and far side. Out to the 35 to the 30. Shoved out of bounds. Another first down for the Crescent Knights. And immediately you're seeing the benefits there of the read is that option, he pulls it back, and the Parkway defense bit, thought the ball was going to Klein. Linebackers vacated some space and a big pickup for the Knights. Uh, a really nice first drive here, uh, Nate, as they, they put together uh, that's the this upcoming play will be the sixth play of the drive, but they've churned up a lot of yards here in these six plays. They have, and they're, they're playing up tempo. They want to go quick, not giving Parkway a lot of time to take any breaths here on this first drive. Hunter alone in the shotgun this time. They'll send a man in motion. It's Jarrett Harding. They'll give the hand, hand off to him. Nearly brought down to the backfield. He gets to the near side. He's in the open field at the 15-10. Brought down inside the 10-yard line, but a nice play by Jarrett Harding. Puts Crestview inside the 10-yard line. Do we have a penalty flag back here somewhere? Yeah, Harding, it looks like we're going to have a hold coming back, and Harding looks shaken up as he's down on the sidelines. So Jarrett Harding down at the 10-yard line here along the near sideline. Okay, so we got a holding penalty. That will be a costly one for Crestview, the first call that we've seen here tonight. But that was a big play there, Nate, negated by that holding. It was. You saw Kellen Putnam. He's the one that's going to get flagged out. Had the big block earlier in the drive, trying to have another one that time. Just held on a little bit too tight. Harding, though, Still down on the sideline, and we're going to have a stop and play. Hopefully he's okay. They're able to get him up. He's a big part of what this night's offense does. And with the warm weather, they'll take an opportunity to get some water. We will as well. We'll step aside here on WOSN. Back here at Crestview High School, 9.37 to play here in the first quarter. Still scoreless between the Parkway Panthers and the Crestview Knights. Crestview, seventh play of the drive upcoming. And instead of being inside the 10-yard line, they're back at the 29 after that holding penalty. Yeah, big play comes back. But Crestview's really right now been able to do pretty much whatever they want, whether it's through the air as we see right here or on the ground. Hunter, the throwback, looking in the end zone for Putnam. It's caught. Touchdown, Knights. 
What a great adjustment by Putnam that time. He saw that that was going to be underthrown just slightly, was able to get rid of the receiver, come back on the ball, and a big touchdown for Crestview. A 29-yard touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putnam along the near sideline. Makes it 6 nothing Knights with 9.28 to go here on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. So the Crest Knights will line up for the extra point. Hayden Parrott on to kick the extra point as Hunter will hold. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. That Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Touchdowns are presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. 9.28 remaining here in the first quarter. And Crestview goes on a seven play, 60, 73 yard drive that results in that 29 yard touchdown. And that was very easy for the Crestview Knights. Not a lot of resistance from that Parkway defense. Parkway's going to have to make some adjustments, but it's going to be up to the offense to come out here and see if they can't answer. Obviously, first quarter, a lot of football left to play, but you can set a lot here and establish a tone early on if you're Crestview. Absolutely, and I think they did. They, they threw the ball, I think, maybe a little better than they, they might have thought they, they would. And they, not to say they weren't uh, confident in their ability to throw the football, but there were some, you know, we, we changed some things. You don't throw everything out there in the scrimmage because you don't want Parkway to see everything. But I would say the way that first drive went, they've got to feel pretty good about their pass attack. Well, absolutely. And, you know, you, you know we, we talked about it. Everybody else has talked about it. It hasn't been a secret, you know, with what Crestview wants to do. You know, you mentioned that they have been a balanced attack, you know, pretty much even on off or from uh, through the air and on the ground. So you kind of thought maybe you're going to see a little bit of that. Thought it might be a little bit more run heavy, but Crestview comes out here throwing the ball, looking really good right out the gate. The uh, O-line held up nicely. Lots of time for Hunter back there in the pocket, and they were able to pick him apart. So 9.28 remaining here on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Our scoreboard provided by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler. For over 70 years, visit them in Coldwater or Van Ort or online at Lodix.com. And if you're the Crestview Knights, is there any better feeling than through all the summer workouts, all the summertime, everything that you've been going through since the end of last season, coming out here on week one, opening drive, and looking that good on offense? No, it, it makes you feel like, hey, all those all those 5.30 wake-ups, all, all the sweat, all the blood, all the scrimmages that you went through that maybe you thought, man, that didn't go very well. It all, it's all worth it there after that first drive. <laughs> nope. Bryson Penix has the football teed up. He'll do the kickoff duties this season for the Crestview Knights. And he is set to kick it away as the Panthers will send Logan Green and Eddie Nichols back deep to receive. Chris, you will flare out here. As Penix gets set to put boot to ball. 7 0 Knights. It's an end over end kick that bounces at the 18 yard line, scooped up by Green, and he'll bring it here to the near side. Gets outside to the 30. He'll step out just shy of the 30 for the 29 yard line. And that is where Parkway will begin their first offensive drive of the season. Parkway now going to have to come out and see if they can't match Crestview's energy and see if maybe they can't come down and get an answer of their own. Not let Crestview think that they're going to run away with this game. Parkway's offensive line from left to right. Trent Rollins, Jonas Farmer, Ben Bates, Apollo Thomas, and Kevin Dickey. The Parkway offense goes through junior Fletcher Smith. He's a 5'11", 180-pound junior, wears number eight. And Eddie Nichols, the first team all-MAC running back last season. The big load, 6'1", 225. I think we'll see a lot of the senior running back here this evening. Smith in the shotgun, takes a snap, turns left, hands off to Smith. Or excuse me, hands off to Nichols. He'll get out to the 30-yard line before he's swallowed up by a senior blue. And that is as far as he'll go on first down. It's kind of a little, little surprise at that time. Jared Harding is a big presence in the secondary for Crestview. Wondered if maybe Fletcher Smith might come out trying to air it out, take advantage of having to have a sub come in right away for, for um, Harding but decided to keep it on the ground that time and weren't able to pick up any yards. Parkway wide receivers, Logan Green wears number 33, Caden Heindel number four, number 10 is Landon May, and Colin Langenkamp will serve as an H-back as Smith in the shotgun, second and nine, back to pass, looking, rolls, fires to Nichols out of the backfield, in the flat, stiff arms, gets to the 30, back to the line of scrimmage, shoved out of bounds, a couple of Knights flying to the football there, Wesson Ludwig in the area for Crestview, and that's gonna put Parkway back third and long. You see a lot of hard Hard runs and 
That was a hard two-yard run that time. As Nichols really had a lot of blue jerseys around him, trying to pull on him, knock him down, kept his legs going to keep it up for a positive gain. But saw Parkway try to drop back that time. Looked like they wanted to air it out a little bit. Crestview United's defensive line able to break that up. Third and eight now for the Panthers as Smith will be in the shotgun once again. Nichols to his left. Two receivers to the near side. Smith will roll to the near side. Still looking, still looking. We'll chuck it deep downfield. Logan Green tries to adjust. Incomplete. Nice coverage there made by Carson Hunter, and that looks like that's going to force the first punt of the evening. Fletcher Smith just ran out of room that time as he was trying to roll and try to get something going on the move. Good arm strength, able to get it down the field, but ends up out of bounds. And you know, you don't want to call it worst case scenario because it's first drive or the first quarter, but you got to think that Parkway was hoping to be able to come out and have a little bit, bit more success there on that first drive to get something going, especially after how Crestview's first offensive possession went. So the Panthers will go back in punt formation as Colin Langenkamp will do the punting for the guys in white. Just under eight minutes, we got a timeout call by the Crestview Knights, and we'll take it with them. 7.59 remaining here in the first quarter. Crestview leads 7-0 here on WOSN. Parkway facing a fourth and eight as we return here to action. And instant replays tonight made possible by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth and our communities. As Colin Langenkamp puts his right foot to the ball, as the ball caught by the Crest Unites, they'll bring it here to the near side. Got some room, crossed the 50 yard line, and brought down in the open field as Landon May made the tackle for Parkway. Yes. And Crestview that time had some pretty good space, was able to pick it up off the field, make something almost out of nothing that time, almost broke it, but Crestview's going to have excellent field position for their second time down on the, out on the field. Mason Spieth with the punt return for the Crestview Knights as they'll go back to work with the ball at the Parkway 46-yard line. So nice starting field position for the Knights with 7.45 to go on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. So Carson Hunter in the shotgun by his lonesome. Four wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Still staying in the shotgun by his lonesome. He'll send a man in motion here to the near side behind Parker. They'll run the option to the right. Parker, or Hunter, lost the football. Ball's on the ground. Looks like the Parkway Panthers might have got it, and they did. And that is exactly what Parkway needed, a big play on the defensive side for the Panthers. They were able to get a big turnover right around near midfield. So they were sending Isaac Klein in motion behind Carson Hunter. Going to run the option to the near side, and they fumble. And the Parkway Panthers jump on it. That is a big reversal of fortune because Crestview has great field position. And, and you know in high school football, when the better field position you have, it's more likely that you're scoring points. And instead, Parkway forces the turnover and gets the football right back. And, and as you know, in pretty much every sport, momentum is huge. Crestview that time had a chance to really take all of it here in the early going. But this big swing has Parkway in good position here, see if they can't have some better luck on their second possession. Two receivers to each side, they'll send Langenkamp in motion to the top of your screen. Smith in the shotgun, looking, rolls right, stops, and instead will keep the ball on the ground. Tries to get back to the line of scrimmage and will be right at the original stick. Maybe a yard shy, but uh, smart play there by Fletcher Smith just to hold it and get out of bounds. It was good coverage downfield by the secondary of the Knights. Nothing open deep, so didn't have much of a choice that time, did Fletcher Smith. It's fortunate not to have a big loss that ended up only being a loss of one. Smith, the junior, started all 10 games last year for the Panthers through 11 touchdowns, 13 interceptions during his sophomore campaign. Also rushed for 125 yards as he'll be in the shotgun once again. Eddie Nichols to his right, the first team all back running back. Gets the handoff on second and 11. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, rolls off a tackle, gets to about the 45-yard line. So a gain of four there on second down for Parkway. Going to make it third and a little bit more manageable. Such a tough runner as Eddie Nichols that time. Talk about yards after contact, and there was a lot of contact initially at the line of scrimmage. Is able to keep going and pick up about five yards on that carry. And you talk about a first-team All-Mac performer as a junior. 
that, that means something <laughs> in, in in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Absolutely, especially with the you know Parkway not the greatest season overall last year for Nichols to still have that kind of success and to be recognized and people to see the kind of talent that he has, especially when he has to go against the competition he does week in and week out, really says something about him. Fletcher Smith looking for Caden Berry across the middle. Pass incomplete will bring up another fourth down here for the Panthers. It's a fourth and seven with 6.51 on our Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. Caden Langenkamp will come back into punt as the Panthers, or excuse me, the Knights, excuse me, will have Hunter Jones and Parker Spieth back deep. Mason Spieth back deep to return. High circling kick going to be caught by Spieth. He'll bring it up the middle of the field, excuse me, by Jones. He goes right up to the 37-yard line, and that is where Crestview will begin their third drive, hoping to reverse their fortune from the last one. And not as good a field position as that last possession, but right around where they got their first possession at, we saw what they were able to do with that one. So Crestview obviously trying to repeat and see if they can't come down and put another six on the board. So first and 10 for the Knights at their own 37-yard line. They've had pretty good starting field position. They, of course, got the ball at the Parkway 46 before fumbling, and now at the, their own 37. Uh, good starting field position so far here for the Knights in this first quarter. 7-0 the score. Crestview with the lead and the football. As Carson Hunter will be in the shotgun. Klein to his right. Two receivers and a wing to the near side. Takes a snap, hands off to Klein. He'll bounce off right tackle. Brought down nearly a horse collar tackle, but was able to just grab the back of the jersey was Eddie Nichols, the middle linebacker, to make that a stop of half a yard or so. We talked about how big of a bruising runner Eddie Nichols is, and that's because when he flips to that defensive side, running that middle linebacker position, he loves that contact, and you saw it right there. 134 tackles last year for Eddie Nichols. Led the Grand Lake area, which encompasses Salina St. Mary's, most of the Mac schools for the Daily Standard. But 134 tackles in 10 games is doing all right. Hunter takes the snap, fakes the handoff, will throw down deep. Got a man, can't connect with Bryson Penix from his tight end spot. Could get there, and it'll bring up third and long here for the Crest Knights, but they have not been afraid to go deep. Now Penix got behind the defense that time. Parkway fortunate they weren't able to connect. Crestview had an opportunity for a huge play. Halfway through this first quarter, 5.55 remains on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Third and nine and a half upcoming here for the Crestview Knights. Hunter will be alone in the shotgun this time. They'll send Kellen Putnam to the bottom of your screen with four receivers to the top. They'll send him in motion this time. Fake the handoff to him. Hunter lobs across the middle of the field, nearly intercepted by Logan Green as Hunter was looking for Bo Eggleston. And that's going to force Crestview's first punt of the evening. Carson Hunter that time fortunate as Eggleston was just able to get his fingertips on that one to misdirect it, because that looked like that was going to be an easy interception. Big defensive stand for the Panthers. They're going to get this ball back and should have pretty good field position. Garrett Yinger back deep to punt for the Knights. Logan Green will back, be back deep for Parkway to return the punt as he stands with his heels at his own 25-yard line. Yinger awaits the snap here. As Crestview leads 7-0 in the season, lead lifter. High snap, goes up to gets it. Spiraling kick, gonna bounce at the 30. Panthers gotta get away from it, it'll bounce at the 25 yard line and that is where Parkway will begin their third drive of the evening. Nate Parkway has hung in defensively here a couple of different times. If they can put it together a drive here, I mean, I think they gotta feel pretty good about the way this first quarter has rolled out, all things considered. Yeah, absolutely. As we're nearing the end here of this first quarter, definitely kind of feel like a change of momentum, a change of fortune for that Parkway defense. As it didn't look like it was going to be very formidable for the Knights' offense, but really made some adjustments, took some big stands here, but now they need the offense to get going. Smith in the shotgun, Nichols to his left, two receivers to each side. They'll send a man in motion to the near side. That's Colin Langenkamp. They'll turn, fire to Green along the near side. In the hash marks, tries to get outside. Can't. He's going to go right down back at the line of scrimmage. So a game of nothing there on first down for the Panthers. They had that set up, but... A little bit of a, a missed block there on the edge really stopped that from being a big play. 
So the clock continues to tick. 5.15 to go here in the first quarter. Crestview leads 7-0 over the Parkway Panthers. Parkway, 4 of 5 returning on their starting offensive line. They got four juniors and a senior, so four or five are returners. Uh, that meant a lot of young guys got a lot of playing time last year. Smith in the shotgun. Nichols to his left. He'll hand off to Nichols. Stiff arms on the outside. Gets back to the 25. He fumbled the football, and Cressy pounces. Second turnover of the quarter, one for each team. And this one's going to be costly for the Panthers as it sets the Knights up in great field position. And a couple of times Parkway's had the football, they have not taken a whole lot of time off the clock. They got the football with 5.38 remaining here in the first quarter, took 50 seconds off. Last time they had a the football, they took less than a minute off. Their defense has been on the field an awful lot here in this first quarter, and now Crescu has fantastic field position at, their, at the Parkway 25-yard line. So the Knights offense will go back to work after scoring on their first touch or first drive, a seven play, 73-yard touchdown drive that capped off at a 29-yard touchdown pass. As Crestview will go back to work. Hunter in the shotgun. I have two running backs. I believe that's Bryce and Penix to the left of Hunter. As he'll take the snap and hand off to Penix. He'll bring it off right tackle at the 20. Got a block on the outside, 15. Tripped up on the outside by Hunter right now, where he'll make the touchdown saving tackle. Well, that's enough for a Crestview first down on their first play of the drive. Been very impressed here, Miller, going with the blocking of these wide receivers from the ninth salt there one more time. They've been doing an excellent job to give their runners some opportunities to get some bigger gains. So 440 remains here. The ball now at the 13-yard line after a 12-yard game. First carry of the evening for Bryson Penix. As Braxton Leith will join Hunter in the backfield as he'll go under center for the first time. Penix at fullback, Leith at the tailback. Hands off to Penix. Nope, he'll keep it himself, Carson Hunter. Nobody saw him. He's got one man to beat on the outside. Can't get there. He does dive for the pylon. Is he in? He is not. He's going to say he stepped out just inside the five-yard line, but a heck of an individual effort there by Carson Hunter. He would have the ball in the fullback's gut until he was about tackled, yanked it out when the whole mass of humanity was in the middle of the field, and then tries to dive for the pylon. Couldn't get there. But what a fantastic effort by Carson Hunter there. And you got to give the Parkway defense credit because that looked like that was going to be a walk-in touchdown. He did a nice job flying to the football, making Hunter have to make an adjustment to go outside, trying to see if they can't prevent them from putting on six. Parker Spieth, the six-foot-two wide receiver at the top of your screen, comes in as they'll go back in the eye formation. Kellen Putnam at the bottom, 4-12 to go. They'll hand off to Penix up the middle. Did he get in the end zone from two yards out? He did not. He stopped just shy of the goal line, and it'll bring up third, second and goal. That's going to bring up second goal. The clock continues to tick on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard as Crescia looks to punch in another. Leland Smith insurance touchdown. 7 0 the score as Hunter gets further instructions from Crestview head coach James Lawson Heiser in his second season. Leaving the Knights, they went 6 and 5 last year, lost a one score game in the playoffs, 13 7 to Lima Central Catholic. Hunter will go back under center one more time at the one yard line. Hunter just dives across the goal line. He's in, and a one yard touchdown run. By Carson Hunter makes it 13 0 Crestview. And that's what you need to do when you have a turnover. You've got to turn it into points. Crestview does a great job that time to extend their lead. One yard touchdown run. Touchdowns are presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs makes it 13 0 Crestview. Crestview up to the two-point try. Knights look like they're going to go for two. Now we're going to get into, nope, Hunter still in the shotgun. They will go for two. They'll run the option off the left side. He'll try to get in the end zone, does. And it's a 15-0 lead for Crestview. An easy conversion that time for Hunter. is able to cut it back up right through the middle of the line. Crestview now 15 nothing with still 3.30 left to go here in the first quarter. And we'll step aside after that Leland Smith insurance touchdown. Crestview 15, Parkway nothing in the first quarter here on WOSN.
Our scoreboard tonight provided by Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert. Online at Lodix.com. A four play, 25 yard touchdown drive by the Crestview Knights makes it 15 0. Two point conversion there. Interesting look on a two point conversion, Nate, where they uh, just line up off balance and run the opposite way and get in the end zone. Yeah, and you know, is it successful and it works? Sometimes you don't have to get fancy with things. Those are the best things. And, and sometimes the easiest. <laughs> Bryson Penix will tee up the football. He'll kick off for the Crestview Knights as they lead 15-0 over their rival, the Parkway Panthers. Parkway has Logan Green and Eddie Nichols back deep to receive. As they'll try to get something going on this drive, their fourth drive here in the first quarter. Penix low, Squibber bounces at the 35. It's scooped up by a Panther on the far sideline. Colin Langenkamp has it. He splits a couple of guys, gets out to the 40, and that'll be the best starting field position of the night for the Panthers. Yeah, good run, a little shot in the arm for the Panthers. Try to see if they can't get things going here offensively. 22 to go here in the first quarter. And Coach Henkel, he mentioned coming into this game that they really wanted to have long, sustained offensive possessions. They thought that that was going to be a key to coming away with the victory tonight. As you mentioned a little bit ago, they have done anything but that as they've had very quick offensive possessions, not a lot of time coming off the clock. So hoping to see if they can't get something going, pick up some first downs, and, and really try to grind some time off the clock. Fletcher Smith fires along the far sideline, caught at the 46-yard line. Looks like it's caught by Colin Langen here, excuse me, Caden Heindel on the reception. That's just the ninth play for Parkway here in this first quarter on their fourth drive. And really one of the few positive plays that they've had offensively as well. It's a second and six upcoming for the Panthers as we're under three minutes to go here in this first quarter. Nichols lined up left of Fletcher Smith in the shotgun. Smith rolls to the near side, looking in the flat. Now pressured, will chuck it deep, looking for Langenkamp. Fantastic defense there by Isaac Klein. Tips it away from Colin Langenkamp as he made the catch up and tipped it out of the hands of Langenkamp on second down. Isaac Klein did a great job of timing his jump, making sure he was able to high point that football to knock that one loose. So third and six upcoming here for the Panthers. Is this is this getting close to four down territory here? Where you're at on the field and, and kind of what Crestview's offense has been able to do, you think you got to be getting a little bit close as they've been able to do a lot, um, a lot here in the early going. You got to want to try to get something going out of your offense. So we'll see though as they take a timeout on the field. 2:42 remaining here in the first quarter. We'll stay here, Parkway, with the football trailing 15 at nothing, and um, just their fourth their fourth opportunity with the football here. They went three and out twice, fumbled after their second during their second play, the last drive. Now faced with a third and six, and and, and obviously you don't want to think you know this is do or die or anything like that here in the first quarter, but. If you don't get the first down, you're looking at a, a, a decent punt that puts Crestview back pretty deep in their own field position. But also, after that first drive, they, they went 73 yards in six plays on their first, seven plays on their first drive. So I'm not sure what the what the feeling is on that Parkway sideline of, hey, what are we doing here? And I think we'll know, depending on whether they run the football here or throw the football here, what the plan is. But when you get to like the 40, 45 on your own territory, it's almost just as beneficial to go for it if you get a fourth and short. Yeah, you know, you, you can sometimes try to go for that big play as well because sometimes it can turn into as good of a punt depending on how, how it all yeah. goes if, if it doesn't go your own way. But, you know, Parkway, they, they you know, they're just missing a, a little bit. Right now, Crestview's a step ahead. They seem to really have everything covered very well for Parkway. Not a lot of openings. They're doing a nice job flying to the football. The line's doing a nice job of not making sure Eddie Nichols isn't able to spring free. So we'll see here what Parkway's thinking. And if they do decide to go for it um, on fourth, I think we'll get an idea of how the coaching staff is feeling about their defense. Fletcher Smith drops back, pressure, throws it to the middle of the field, nearly intercepted by Isaac Klein off his fingertips as they were looking for Colin Langenkamp, and that will bring up fourth and six for the Panthers. And it looks like they are going to pump this ball. As they still think that their defense can come out here and, and try to get a big stand for them. And again, we talked about it earlier, Nate, that Parkway took less than 40 seconds off the clock here, that each time they've gotten the football, they have not taken a whole lot of time off. Their, their defense has been on the field an awful lot here in this first quarter. Langen can't back deep to punt. Takes the high snap. Low kick, end over end. Kick picked up at the 20-yard line. Speed brings it to the near sideline. 
slips past the tackler down to the 43-yard line before he is gobbled up by Derek Wagner. You know, and really only about a 12 yards difference in the change of field position. You almost wonder at that point if they're going to continue to give up those big returns, which crutchu has been able to get pretty much on every punt. You know, at a certain point, you got to think, well, we, we might as well go for it because we're not really losing that much field position if we punt it anyway. Yeah. No, absolutely. So 2.22 to go here in the first quarter on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard as Crestview begins their fifth drive here of the first quarter. Carson Hunter had the one-yard touchdown run on the last drive for the night, so we get a shotgun. Bryson Penix to his right. It's a tight end and a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Two wide receivers to the top. As Hunter takes the snap, shotgun snap, turns left, hands off to Klein in the open field, out to the 50, right at the first down marker. We'll see if that's a first down or it's going to be second and one. Very close to the first down marker. Klein continuing to run hard. He's able to get right through the teeth of that defense for a big nine-yard gain. So a second and one upcoming here for the Knights with two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Hunter will be in a shotgun once again. Penix and Klein join him in the backfield. As Parkway brings their 4-3 defense to play. Hunter hands off to Penix. He'll come off right tackle. Met in the hole by Logan Green, but it is enough for the first down for Cassie to move the chains. Now we talked about how much time this Parkway defense has been on the field. And on top of that, Crestview running that up-tempo offense. They're really, the Panther defense are getting no time to try to catch their breath here in the early going. And Crestview has done a, a pretty nice job here. Um, the last couple of drives, you know, their last drive, four, four rushes. Two rushes to start this drive. They, they, they've found something on the ground here the last couple of plays. First and 10 for the Knights with under 90 seconds to play in the half. The quarter, excuse me. Klein off tackle, met in the backfield. Green picks him up and slams him down. A gain of two on the play for the Knights will bring up second and eight. Seventh consecutive run for the Knights. We have one minute remaining here in this first quarter. Cressy leads 15-0 on a lot of jewelry scoreboard. Cressy checks their wristbands as they get the information from James Lottenizer, the second-year head coach. Penix will now line up in the slot at the top of your screen as Hunter joined the Klein in the backfield. They'll turn, fire to Penix, double pass. Nope, he'll take the flat. Hurdle over a man at the 40, still on the loose on the outside, pushed out of bounds near the 20-yard line. It's another Crestview first down with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. I had the same thought you did at first. I thought it was going to be a double pass. Looked like he was <laughs> looking downfield, but gave his uh, gave his teammates some time to set up some blocks for him and a nice run along the sidelines. Nice job there by Bryson Penix in the open field as the clock will continue to tick. 15-0. As Crestview marches towards the Parkway red zone, just outside of the 22-yard line. Hunter, under center in the I formation. Penix and Speed, behind, or Leaf behind him. They'll hand off to Penix. Nope, Hunter will try to pull it out again. He is gobbled up. Trent Rollins, the 6'2 junior for Parkway, snatches up the quarterback to end the first quarter. We played one quarter of football here. Crestview leads 15-0 on the lot of scoreboard. We'll come back with second quarter action for you here on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Kerry Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth and our community. Second quarter about to get underway. Crestview leading Parkway 15 to nothing. They got on the board at the 928 mark of the first quarter. A 29-yard touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putnam made it 6 nothing. The extra point made it 7 nothing. And then with 3.28 to go in the first quarter, a one-yard touchdown run by Hunter. Two-point conversion good. Got us to our 15 nothing score. Second and 10 for the Knights. Ball at the 22-yard line. Hunter in the shotgun. Klein to his left. Hunter back to pass. Looks over the middle of the field. Has a wide open ring. Shoots it. And walk into the end zone. A 22-yard touchdown for Carson Hunter to run Sheets makes it 21 nothing Knights. Middle of the field was wide open. Sheets probably a little bit of surprise when he didn't have any pressure on him. A little bit too easy that time. Crest Knights continuing their dominant first half. 22-yard strike from Carson Hunter to Ren Sheets. 
for another Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Touchdowns are presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services for your first call, your first call for all of your insurance needs. Snap is back, the kick, hold is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good by Hayden Parrott. Makes it 22 nothing. Christian. I tell you what, Nate, the Knights have done a really nice job through the air here a couple different times. They have not been shy of taking a shot here or there. They got a 29-yard touchdown, a 22-yard touchdown to make it 22-0. Yeah, they've done a nice job of just taking what the defense has been giving them. Seen a lot of big plays over the middle of the field that time. Been able to get things done on the air, on the ground as well. So, you know, you hate to talk about you know, must score possessions, especially when you're in the first half. But this right here feels like Parkway. If they're going to want to keep themselves in this ball game, they've got to come away with some points here on this drive. Or at minimum, just eat some time off the clock where, you know, they, they got the football, they've had it for 50 seconds, put their defense right back on the field. And, and their defense has done, I think, a pretty nice job here. Just they've, they've broken a couple of different times. But the amount of plays that Crestview ran in the first quarter compared to Parkway, is it's a pretty lopsided advantage for the Knights. Yeah, absolutely. Got to be something that Parkway's got to find some way of, uh, of just getting something that they can kind of hold on to. You know, you're not going to get all the points back on one play. It's, it's just not going to happen, but you've got to find something that works that can allow you to have some sustained success as you move through the rest of this game. Stop and score, stop and score, stop and score. It's got to be the motto here for the Panthers as they trail 22 0. One play into this second quarter. Bryson Penix has the football teed up. Or Hayden Parrot, excuse me, has the football teed up now. Penix. Kicked off the first couple of times here for the Knights, but Hayden Parrott now has the ball teed up. Parrott, a 5'9 freshman, will kick off for Crestview. 22 0 the Knights lead on the Monix Jewelry scoreboard. Short squibber caught on the run by the Panthers. The 42 yard line shoved back to the 40. Didn't get a number on who caught that for Parkway. Might have one of the offensive linemen. Nonetheless, probably didn't expect to be catching the football on a kickoff here tonight. But good starting field position for the Panthers at their own 44-yard line. Yeah, a break that Parkway needed that time. Beneficial as they get some good field position here. And, you know, we're talking about the offense and how much they've struggled, but this is a unit that can get it done. Four or five returning offensive linemen, nine starters total on offense. They've played a lot of football. They know what they've got to do. Right now, though, they've got to dig deep, kind of grind and get something going. Fletcher Smith in the shotgun. They'll fake the handoff to Eddie Nichols. Nope, do get it to Nichols, and he is gobbled up in the backfield. Crestview wraps him up in the backfield. And Crestview's defensive line right now, they are just dominating that line of scrimmage. They are giving Parkway no time. They're in the backfield so quick. That if, if you're back there and you're Nichols or, or Smith, you don't even know what to do at that point because they're there as soon as the ball snapped. Three-yard loss there for Eddie Nichols. Makes it second and 13 as the Panthers will line up in the shotgun. They'll send Heindel and Langenkamp to the near side. As Nichols, right, side, sidecar with Smith in the shotgun. Langenkamp in motion and a penalty flag. we got a false start against the Panthers. That'll back them up five. So back-to-back miscues here by the Panthers will make it second and 18 now. And after starting on their own 44-yard line, they'll be at their own 36. No. Two-nothing the score. Unforced errors, mistakes right now, especially on a drive that is so important. These are the things that, you know, you just cannot do in football games. And I know it's week one and you're still working through some things, but right now, Parkway hurting themselves. Take the handoff to Nichols. Smith hangs in, fires it downfield. Caden May went up and caught the, Landon May, excuse me, went up and caught the football at the 35-yard line. A big play by the 6'4 junior. Puts Parkway in Crestview field position. Great job by May that time going up and making sure that he came down with that football. He had two defenders on him, but he made sure no one was going to knock that away or take it away from him. Landon May with the big play puts it first and 10 for the Panthers at the Crestview 35-yard line. 10.35 to go here in the second quarter. Lots of momentum now shifting Parkway's way after that big play. 
Smith in the shotgun with Nichols to his right, two receivers to each side. Another false start by the Panthers. And these are the things of the coaching staff. You just can't do anything but hang your head. So frustrating. You finally get that big play you're looking for. Feel like you got some things going. Want to go up in that hurry up offense. Hurry up, get up to the line of scrimmage, and just like that, five yards back. And instead of maybe, you know, you run the football there on first down, get a couple yards, and you keep moving forward. Now you're at first and 15, back at the 40 instead of the 35, and, and you start to wonder, oh man, did, did we do this again? The last thing you want to do is make it easy on this Crestview defense. Smith, back to pass, looking left, throws it to Logan Green, caught at the original line of scrimmage, slips a tackle, and is finally gobbled up in the open field. A nice open field tackle there by Bryson Penix and Ren Sheets to bring down Logan Green at the original line of scrimmage. Green almost able to break that for a big play as he was able to get out of that tackle. But Nice help from coming from the Crestview defense, able to take him down, but back to second and 10, it's manageable. You're getting that chunk plays back, and that's what you needed to do right there. That'll keep the clock ticking, which Parkway needs here in this first half. They have not taken a whole lot of time of possession, as Fletcher Smith will be back in the shotgun. Nichols to his right, two wide receivers to each side. Green and Langenkamp to the bottom of your screen as Smith drops back to pass, now flush from the pocket, rolling, rolling. Gets outside the numbers and takes a shot from Carson Hunter. Hunter slow to get up, helped up by a couple of teammates though. Got kind of a little quarterback on quarterback action there on second down, but got maybe half a yard there, did Smith to make it third and long again. A lot of running by Smith that time, not able to pick up a lot of yards, and they got a little bit close there on the sidelines. You, know, you saw the. Uh, um, excuse me, Carson Hunter coming there to try to. See if he couldn't get that hit out of bounds. Luckily got that before he stepped out, so he didn't pick up the big penalty. So Smith will be in a shotgun once again. Nichols to his left, two to each side. Takes a snap and will fire. A tunnel screen to the left. Left it just a little short of Logan Green, and that'll bring up third and long. And you got to think that Parkway is going to be going for it here on fourth down. So fourth and nine at the 34-yard line. If Parkway leaves their offense on the field, their first fourth down conversion attempt here with 9.16 to go in the second quarter. Crestview leads 22-0 over the Parkway Panthers. It's Parkway deep in Crestview, the deepest they've gotten into Crestview territory here this evening. Now faced with fourth and nine. Smith in the shotgun, three receivers to the left, one to the right. He'll roll to the far side. Looking, looking, fires it deep, has a man downfield, and it's nearly intercepted, but the pass is broken up as he looks for Logan Green at the pylon on the far side. And it is passed and tipped away by Speed. Parker Speed gives Parkway, or excuse me, gives Crestview the football at their own 34 yard line after the fourth and out. Parkway got the look they wanted. Logan Green had gotten behind his defender, but the ball hung up in the air just a little bit too long. Nice job making an adjustment was Parker Speed to get up in there and almost come away with the interception, but it's better that he didn't yeah. as if he would have been pinned way back there uh, near the goal line on that interception, but instead Crestview will take over out at the 35. So Wesson Ludwig, the center, will stand over the football as he'll deliver it back to Carson Hunter as Isaac Klein joins him in the backfield, 9.08 to go here in the second quarter as Crestview begins on their own 34-yard line. They'll hand off to Klein. Klein brought down at the line of scrimmage. As Eddie Nichols makes the stop for the Panthers. Panthers defense coming on the field after the longest break of the game so far. The first time we've seen some life out of that Parkway offense. Looked a little bit rejuvenated there as they've had a chance to kind of get their legs back underneath them. And Took two minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. They're the, by far their longest possession of the night. They went six plays there. Take two minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. 22 nothing. Knights with the football. And so they'll go back to the I formation. Hunter under center. They'll run the option to the near side. He'll keep it himself. Makes a couple of guys miss. Got, actually dropped for a loss at about one there on the play. Looking for just a moment like he might have bobbled the football after he was down, but a nice play there by Derek Wagner. He tried to gobble up the football for the Panthers. But Good pursuit by the Panther defense that time. Not a lot of space as Carson Hunter just had nowhere to go. Fortunate to be able to hold on to that football as you saw a lot of the white jerseys reaching in there trying to swipe away at it. So third and long here for the Knights. As Carson Hunter will be alone in the shotgun. Four receivers to the top of the screen, one to the bottom as the 6'2 senior stands by his lonesome in the backfield. 
Hunter, back to pass, hangs in the pocket, fl pocket flushed, has to roll to the near side, makes one man miss to the 40 to the 45, and he hit the first down, he's right at the first down marker, and the official along the near sideline says yes he did, that's a first down. Carson Hunter making something out of nothing right there, looked like Parkway was going to have a chance to stop it, force a fourth and long that time. Carson Hunter able to, with some nifty uh, footwork, able to get out of trouble and pick up a first down. So the ball now at the 45 yard line with 7.37 to go on the Lodix Jewelry School Board. As Crestview puts together another little drive here. Fourth play of the drive upcoming after the first down. Penix to the right of Hunter. Klein behind him. Takes a snap. Hands off to Penix. He'll come off left tackle. Penalty flag on the play as he'll roll out of bounds as a host of Panthers drag him out. We'll see what the penalty flag was. Looks like we're going to have a hold on Crestview. So Parkway able to push Crestview back a little bit here and try to see if they can't come up with another defensive stop. And those holds, Nate, are one of the more costly penalties there where you, you, know, you get pushed back 10 yards and uh, instead of, you know, first and nine or second and nine, you're looking at first and 21 now. And, and it's such an easy thing to do as well. You know, just so much, it's just your natural instinct. You know you get beat. You're trying to help. You know, you just kind of grab real quick. And especially when you're running those to the near sideline like that, officials right there. Those are easy ones for them to see. Seven and a half minutes to play here in this first half. 22-0 Crestview over Parkway. That's the Knights' fourth play of the drive upcoming. Hunter with Klein behind him in a pistol. Takes a snap. Fakes the handoff. We'll keep it. Fires. Gets it to Eggleston at the 40. Spins out of a tackle. Back to the original line of scrimmage. A game of 11 there on first down by Bo Eggleston. A nice play there by the Knights to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And actually, even though that we had a big play that time, and they are able to pick up some chunk yardage. Parkway fortunate. Crestview uh, missed Hunter Jones running wide open across the middle of the field. He had beaten everybody. If they're able to connect on that pass, that is a walk-in touchdown. Well, up tempo here by the Knights is going to cost him five more yards is a false start penalty by the guys in blue. will push them back five and make it second and 14. So last drive we saw the penalties hurting Parkway and now it's Crestview, their turn out there. Is, it's now the second penalty of this drive. It continues to kind of stall what they're trying to do. Get a timeout here by the Parkway Panthers. We'll take it with them. Crestview leads 22-0 over Parkway here on WOSN. Our scoreboard provided by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Second and 14 for the Crest Unites after a false start penalty. They lead 22-0. 7.20 to go here in the second quarter. Ball at their own 41-yard line. They'll send Bryson Penix in motion as Carson Hunter rolls to the near side, has Penix. Missed him, but he found Ren Sheets in the open field at the 40. He'll step out of bounds and shoved out of bounds by Eddie Nichols, but another big play by Ren Sheets. He's got two receptions on the night. One went for a 22-yard touchdown. The other puts Crestview into Parkway field position here on second and 14. And I'll tell you what, Ren Sheets is making them miss tackles. He is running right through arm tackles, not letting, it, not letting himself go down at first contact and it's leading to some big gains. So Crestview at the 35 yard line now the Parkway Panthers as Carson Hunter will be in the backfield joined by Braxton Leaf. Two receivers to each side. Turns hands off to Leaf. He'll make a man miss in the backfield. Runs into his own lineman. Blocked down right at the 35 yard line. Number 32, we'll see some nice sportsmanship there between Donovan Reef and Eddie Nichols as he'll help up the, Reef will help up the middle linebacker. Makes it second and nine. Upcoming play will be the eighth of the drive here for the Knights. So they started at their own 34 yard line and they're now at Parkway's 34 yard line. Hunter, two receivers to each side. Penix and Jones at the bottom of your screen. This Hunter back to pass, fires to the top of the screen, got Kellen Putman wide open, and he drops it in the bucket, a 34-yard touchdown to Kellen Putman, makes it 28-0 Crestview. It was a beautiful throw, but a great adjustment by Kellen Putnam, who had started going to the middle of the field, realized that the ball was getting released to the outside. Putnam makes the adjustment, and Carson Hunter drops it right into his right into his hands, an easy touchdown. And 
you know, when you look at that drive, you got to go back to that 10-yard uh, gain on third down by Carson Hunter, where he was able to scramble around, extend this drive. And Carson Hunter right now just doing everything that this Crestview Knight team needs. Aiden Parrott will be on to kick the extra point as they'll get the block out to him. Might need to uh, get a timeout here as Carson Hunter finally gets the block. As Parrott, the freshman, will be on to kick the extra point. They'll get a snap back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And the kick splits the uprights. It's 29-0. Crestview leads Parkway with 6.23 to go here in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout as we start the season here in week one on WOSN. Hayden Parrott has the ball teed up for the Crestview Knights as they'll kick off to Parkway after Carson Hunter's third touchdown pass of the first half made it 29-0. Just dropped it right in the bucket to Kellen Putnam. And a fantastic pitch and catch here in week one of the high school football season, Nate. That I don't know that you're, you're going to see a prettier pass and catch than that here in week one. No, it was absolutely beautiful. Highlight reel stuff that time is... Carson Hunter continues to have an excellent night. Apollo Thomas, the offensive lineman for Parkway, takes the uh, takes the kickoff and runs it up the far sideline. I like to see the big guys with the football, and he gets it out near the midfield. You know, Parkway's had excellent field position the last couple of possessions, not able to cash in quite yet. You know, still six minutes left to go here in the first half. Still time to get on the scoreboard and try to see if they can't get a little bit of momentum going into the locker room. So 6.17 to play here in the first half on the Waddix Jewelry scoreboard. As Parkway looks to put something together. Last drive, they went six plays, their longest by far here in the first half. Fletcher Smith, the quarterback, the 5'11 junior and a shotgun. Eddie Nichols to his left. They'll send Colin Langenkamp in motion and off to Nichols. Goes up the middle of the field, gets a gain of about four before he's brought down by a couple of Knights. So second and seven upcoming for the Panthers. As they get into Crestview territory. Nichols to the right of Smith this time. Two receivers split out wide to each side. Smith looks left, fires, dropped by Colin Langenkamp. And just can't have that, Nate, when you're trying to get something going there. You, you, you are wide open and just can't drop that football like that. You know, when you're in comeback mode, those little things are what can kill drives and, and, and kind of kill the spirits a little bit. And that one just in the hands, thought about running, trying to see where he was going before he had secured. So now it brings up third and long for the Panthers. So third and seven upcoming. As Smith in the shotgun once again, same formation, two wide receivers to each side. Takes the belt high snap, looks right, and flushed from the pocket. Smith tries to get away and does. Now pressured, going the wrong way, tries to get back to the middle of the field. He's stripped by Bryson Penix, football is loose. It's scooped up by the middle linebacker for Crestview, and he's going all the way, Garrett Yeager, into the end zone for a Crestview touchdown. Scoop and score for the Knights. And you know, that time, Fletcher Smith just trying to make something happen. Didn't want to throw the football away. Knew how important that drive was, so he tried to keep it alive. Held on a little bit too long. Great job by the Crestview Knight defense to get in there, knock that one loose, and then you saw the big man able to take it in for the defensive touchdown. So 35 nothing now. Crestview leads as Garrett Yinger, the 6'4", 210-pound junior, scoops up the football and trots it in from about 30 yards out to make it 35-0. It's Leland Smith. That touchdown presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs as the Crestview Knights rolling here in this first half. So the Knights will line up in that unbalanced formation. The two-point conversion was successful the last time. As Hunter takes the snap, he'll hand off to Klein. Klein slips through a tackle, gets to the goal line before Rock meet hard place. Did he get there? He did not. 35 nothing. the score remains. We'll step aside. Crestview rolling in the first half here on WOSN.
Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Carry Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth and our communities. Crestview rolling here in the first half. The Knights lead 35-0 over their heated rivals, the Parkway Panthers, after the scoop and score by Garrett Yinger. As Bryson Penix now has the football teed up for Crestview as he took a couple of kickoff opportunities off. And they kind of pooched it the last two times that Hayden Parrott kicked off. But Penix will boot it deep this time. Grabbed by Logan Green at the 15-yard line. He'll take it straight up the far sideline. Now bounces it outside Green to the 35-yard line. Shoved out of bounds. And a nice return there by Logan Green. Parkway still trying to make something happen. Special teams that time, trying to see if they can't give their team good field position one more time. And, you know, right now that offensive line, they, they just has to give Fletcher Smith some time. Right now he's running for his life. He, they try to move the pocket, but even then he's not having a whole lot of time to be able to turn and square his shoulders up and get his feet underneath him to try to get some accurate and, and powerful throws going. So. The O-line right now has got to dig deep, got to try to give them some time. You know, we mentioned it prior to that last drive. They still have some time to try to get some points on the board here going into halftime. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Smith throws right, caught by Hunter Reidenauer, makes one man miss at the 40, slung down by the Crestview defender. Is that Isaiah Barton on the stop? And you got to be impressed with the night defense. When the defensive line is, is on, they've been able to get in the backfield at will. And then when they do get the ball out, three, four blue jerseys that time swarming, making sure that there's no extra yardage gained. So second and five now for the Panthers. 4.45 to go here in the first half on the Lottex Jewelry scoreboard. It's Fletcher Smith in the shotgun. Eddie Nichols to his left, two receives to each side. Smith stands high in the pocket. Now rolls to the near side to the 40, 45, for he's chased out of bounds by Bryson Penix. And he makes contact with an official, or excuse me, a photographer here on the near side. Everybody showing good sportsmanship. As Bryson Penix made sure, I didn't, that wasn't me, I didn't shove it. Yeah, and that would be a, that'd be a tough 15 yard penalty, but he made, made it clear. That was not me, I did not, I did not hit him. And, uh, but a nice sportsmanship there by everybody making sure everybody's all right here on the near sideline. Yeah, hit that tarp that's on the sideline there, lost his footing, and couldn't stop before he went into the photographer. Luckily the photographer was able to keep his footing as well. Everybody's okay after everything on the sideline. So Smith will be back in the shotgun. There's Parkway. Sends May, laying a camp to the near side. Smith takes the snap. Back to pass. Rolls to the near side. Will go deep. Trying to find Heindel. Makes some spectacular one-handed grab, and he will dance into the end zone. A 40, a 53-yard touchdown for the Parkway Panthers. As Caden Heindel makes the spectacular one-hand grab to put the Panthers on the board. What an incredible play by Caden Heindel that time. It's, it's almost, it, at that time, it's almost like he had faked out the defender, made it look like it was going to be an underthrow, and so they stopped. Was able to get a little bit of separation. One-handed bobble catch. Able to finish it off for a touchdown, and that is just what Parkway needed. I mean, makes it 35 to six prior to this extra point. And, I mean, they still got a lot of work to do, but they have finally been able to break through, get on the scoreboard and get a little bit of that momentum their way. 35 to six, the score is Parkway will send out their kickoff unit or a kick PAT unit is Brayton Bruns on for the extra point. The snap is back, the hold is down, the kick is up. Kick is high and through the uprights. 35-7 the score now as Parkway gets on the board. What a fantastic concentration grab by Caden Heidel there to, to make that touchdown grab, the 53-yard touchdown strike. And that touchdown presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. But what a great play there by Caden Heidel, a 5'9 senior. Only caught one pass all of last year. His first catch this season goes for a 53-yard touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you got to give Fletcher Smith some credit there as well as he was, you know, you, you don't see a lot at the high school level quarterbacks who are able to throw their receivers open. That's right. something that a coach really likes to see, but a lot of times you just don't see it. it, it it's a tough skill to develop, um, especially at this level. But that time, Fletcher Smith, plenty of arm strength, put it out there to make sure that um, his receiver was going to be able to catch it behind the defense. And then uh, Heindel able to come up with just an incredible grab. We you know we talked about the highlight catch on the other side. Um, by Crestview. Well, Parkway comes back, highlight catch of their own. Absolutely. 419 mark of the second quarter. As Parkway gets on the board for the first time in the 2022 season. And a 53-yard touchdown strike from 
Fletcher Smith to Caden Heinel gives Parkway sideline some life here as the Panthers in their road white uniforms with the white pants and crest you in the all blues here tonight to start the season as the sun starts to tuck behind the clouds. Might have to turn the lights on here for the second half, but uh, a nice night for the start of the week one of the high school football season. That's Braden Bruns will line the football up on the team at the 40 yard line and he'll get set to kick off for Parkway. who will start the second half with the football. Bruns, kick caught at the 20 yard line by Crestview. He'll take it to the far sideline. Big fella with the football out in the open field. Gets it out to the 45 yard line. It's Chase Werner. Oh, excuse me, Donovan Reith. I have that 51. It was 61 who had the football. And Donovan Reith showing why, uh, hey, coach, maybe give me a couple of touches on the goal line there from the fullback position. You know what well, you can tell, too? Sometimes it's the little things. They have coached their big men, their linemen, oh, okay. when they're out there. If you catch this ball, because immediately two hands over it, running straight ahead, was not going to let that ball come out. He's able to pick up a pretty good game that time, and Crestview going to have some pretty good field position to start. That's a pretty good observation, he thought. This is my time to shine. I am not going to fumble this football because there's a couple of things that go wrong there when, when a guy with number 61 has the football and he drops it. Crestview back on the offensive. 35-7 elite, 4.09 to go here in the first half. They'll send Bryson Penix in motion to the bottom of your screen. Fake the handoff to him. Hunter will keep it himself. He's got plenty of room at the 50. 45, some pass, another tackle. Barrels through a Panther to the 38-yard line. And a nice big run by Carson Hunter. Puts Crestview right back into Parkway's territory. Carson Hunter running like he took that last touchdown by Parkway. Personal coming out, trying to deliver some blows. Runs right through a tackle. And just like that, Crestview on the other side of the 50. So under four minutes to go here in this first half. 35-7. Knights trying to put another one on the board. Ball to 37-yard line. Hunter in the shotgun by his lonesome. As Klein and Penix, Eggleston, Putnam to the far side of the field. Parker speaks to the bottom of your screen as they'll send Klein in motion to the near side. Hunter will roll the opposite way, fires to Eggleston, hit immediately, balls loose. Never grabbed it, though. And instead of a fumble, it's an incomplete pass. We haven't seen Carson Hunter be off target too often, but that time pass a little bit low, a little bit too difficult to gather in by Eggleston. Going to bring up second down. 3.43 remaining here in this first half. And really, Cressy probably trying to punch one in here just to, you know, you could start the, the second half with that running clock where, you know, uh, in week one, and we haven't seen it here yet so far, which is good, but you, you start to see guys maybe get a little cramped up or conditioning could be an issue, and, and you want to make that second half as short as possible if you're the Knights. Hunter in the shotgun. Hands off to Klein. Bounces through a tackler to the 35, still rolling to the 30. Nice run there by the 5'9 junior. Got some laundry on the field on the other side. Looks like it's going to be probably illegal motion on the offense. Going to push the Knights back. I think that's, is that just the third penalty here of the first half for Crestview where they came at kind of inopportune times, but this is another one of those where instead of being second and short, they're going to be second and 15. It's Bryson Penix. Asks to be checked out of the ball game. Ren Sheets will sub in for Crestview. You got to think here before too long, we're going to see Crestview take another shot. Carson Hunter been very accurate. They've had some good luck down the field, and he likes to sling that ball. And man, this this Crestview offense is showing a whole new dynamic so far here in the early going. Carson Hunter already with three touchdown passes on the evening finds on night for a first down. Parker Spieth with the reception for Crestview, moves the chains on second and 15. So they take care of that penalty yardage that time and pick up a first down to keep this drive going with 317 left to go. So moves the ball from the 42 yard line to the 26 yard line. So a 16 yard game there for Parker Speed on the reception. Makes it first and 10 nights. Clock continuing to tick on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard as Hunter in the shotgun, two receivers to each side. Klein behind him. Hunter takes the bell high snap, looking to pass, throws right, finds Eggleston in the flat, can't slip the tackle, Caden Langenkamp, nice open field tackle there by Langenkamp. Uh, that's one of the things that you, you might see from time to time here in the early going is maybe not the, the most crisp tackling, but uh, a nice open field tackle there by Langenkamp to limit that game to just four. Yeah, Langenkamp flying to the football that time, making sure he wrapped up Engelston right away 
They've seen him be able to shake loose a couple of defenders and pick up big plays, but that time Langen can't make sure that didn't happen to, to limit the yardage for the Knights. Crestview content for the clock to continue to move. 2.20 to go here in the second quarter. 35-7 Knights. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen. And off to Klein. Goes, tries to go off right tackle. He's cut down. Is that Parker Lyons on the stop there for the Panthers? Lyons, a 6'1", 180-pound freshman, thrust into the lineup after an injury for Parkway. And uh, the freshman's played pretty well from that linebacker spot. And after that play, saw Carson Hunter motioning over to the sideline. I think he wants to hurry things up a little bit. He's, he's eager to put another score on here before halftime. 35 for the Knights, the 21-yard line. Hunter, back to pass, has three touchdown passes, looking for number four, and he's got it. Nope, oh, pass is com incomplete at the last moment. Kellen Putnam guarded by Hunter right now along the far sideline and couldn't connect, and that'll bring up fourth and five now for the Knights. You see the Parkway cornerbacks, you know, the way that they line up, they slant to make sure that they take away that inside run by the receivers from Crestview. So that leaves that outside open. That time you saw the outside fade. Putnam it ran a good route, but good defense that time. Putnam not able to hang on, and now it brings up a fourth down here. See if Crestview can't convert. 136 to go in the first half. Hunter in the shotgun, takes a snap, drops back, slings it out to Klein out of the backfield. He's got the first down, and it's going to be shoved out of bounds near the 10-yard line, but it's enough to move the chains for the Knights. Another easy pitch and catch for Crestview. Puts them inside, and it'll be first and goal. And that time, that, that was almost Crestview setting Parkway up. They saw it and recognized what they were doing defensively. They, you know, Parkway thought they had it red right, thought it was going to be a fly route, let everybody vacate. Crestview knew that's where they were going to go with it, led the flats wide open, and led to that first down. So it's not first and goal. Ball's at the 12-yard line as Hunter fires. Caught by Eggleston inside the 10, brought down at the 7-yard line as the clock now starts to become a little bit more of a factor. It's going to be second and just a couple here for the as the clock continues to roll. And now if you're Parkway, you want this clock to run as well. You're hoping maybe Crestview runs out of time before they're able to score. Ninth play of the drive upcoming for Crestview. It'll make it the longest drive of the night by plays for the Knights with one minute to go here in this first half. 35-7, Crestview the lead. Carson Hunter in the shotgun, the senior quarterback with three touchdown passes and a touchdown run here in the first half. They'll send Sheets in motion. Hunter will keep it himself off tackle. He is swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Landon May, the defensive end for Parkway, who head coach Joel Hinkle told us, hey, they're expecting a big year from the 6'4 junior, and he swallows up Carson Hunter in the backfield, and a timeout going to be called here by the Knights. Crestview calls for the timeout. 41 seconds remain here in the first half. We'll step aside as well. Crestview leads Parkway 35-0 here on WOSN. Back at Crestview as the Knights lead 35-7. And, of course, big weekend here in the Crestview School District. The Wren Wiffle Ball tradition continues. Tune in Monday night at 8 p.m. here on WOSN for the pageantry and spectacle that is Wren Wiffle Ball, the biggest little game on earth, only on WOSN Monday at 8. Yeah, there might be as many people at the Wren Wiffle Ball on uh, Saturday night, as there are there are here tonight for the high school football game, mate. Yeah, absolutely, I, you know it's one of those ones where you almost like you know what I know we're broadcasting it, but I think I just want to go and watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great, it's a, it, it's a great thing. It's a great event. Third and seven for the Knights. They'll hand off to Bryson Penix. Comes to the bottom of your screen. Gets inside the five. Going to be very close to a first down. Might bring up fourth and short here as the ninth play of the drive for Crestview or tenth play of the drive. Excuse me. And that's going to make it fourth and one from the four yard line with 35 seconds remaining here in this first half. And a smart play of that time, making sure that he got out of bounds and tried to cut it back up to get extra yardage. He didn't want to risk being tackled while still in uh, on the field and let that clock continue to run. So out of bounds now at the five-yard line. Crestview will go back to the I formation as Bryson Penix lining up real close to Carson Hunter. He'll go off the left side. Did he get to the goal line? Nope. Fumbled the football. Fumbled the football, and Parkway's got it. A big goal line stand to end the first half here for the Parkway Panthers. Carson Hunter lost control of the football and fumbles it inside the five-yard line, and the Parkway defense hangs tough. You know, you spend all your time, you know, really 
celebrating the extra effort and, and you know that extra little bit and never wanting to you know be brought down a yard early, always get that extra yardage. That time Carson Hunter trying to do exactly that, but maybe a little bit too much in that position on that part of the field. Tried to stretch the football out, had it knocked loose, and Parkway with a heads up play to make sure that they kept Crestview out of the end zone. 35-7 the score remains as Parkway has the ball at their own two-yard line. You might want to try to just get out of here, but you you got to be wary of the safety as well. Yeah, a little bit of a risky play here, but you know, also kneeling down right there at the two-yard line can be risky because you never quite know if you go back too far. And Crespi, you got to think, is going to try to come at him. Fletcher Smith slings it out to Eddie Nichols, makes a man miss at the five-yard line, barrels through another one out of the shadow of their own goalpost, and Crestview's going to call a timeout, I believe. Or is Parkway call a timeout? I can't imagine. Parkway. Crestview was out of timeout, so that one has to be on Parkway. Okay. I was surprised. I, I, you know, you're, you're in the shadow of your own goalpost. You're probably just, you know, trying to sling it out there, get out of your own end zone, and get out of the half. But they call the timeout here. Maybe saw something they liked and might try to try to put something together here with 20 seconds remaining in the first half. That well, was a nice job by Eddie Nichols that time, cutting back on the inside to make sure he got some positive yardage. And you know, we saw him hit the big play, the 53-yard touchdown a little bit ago. Maybe they think they can shake somebody loose. You know, at this point, down 35 to seven, what do you have to lose anyway? You know, even if maybe you do get the interception way out there, you know, you hope you get them far enough away and um, you know, able to run this clock out and head to the uh, uh, locker room. And Eddie Nichols is a weapon out of the backfield. He had four. 102 yards rushing last year and had 301 yards receiving. So uh, also, and I got the opportunity to see a couple of Parkway scrimmages earlier in the year, and they had a, a play that they just swung out to Eddie Nichols, and he ended up going, I think, 75 yards for a touchdown. So might be something they try to put together here as well. Fletcher Smith in the shotgun, second and five, 20 seconds remaining. Parkway, the ball at their own seven-yard line. They'll send a man in motion to the far side as Smith drops back to pass. Flush from the pocket. Is that a holding call in the end zone? Potentially call ball caught by Landon May, but do we have a penalty flag in the end zone? If so, this is going to be the Crestview sideline once a safety has not been signaled from the officials. Holding in the end zone would give Crestview two more points and it, did and it is a safety. So your worst case scenario if you're Parkway, especially when you were able to get the big completion downfield, but instead of trying to see if you can't take one shot at the end zone here before the end of the half, you're going to have to uh, <laughs> uh, place kick it here. And, you know, we've seen Crest, you have some pretty good returns tonight. So, you know, who knows what can happen. Also, Nate, that puts us at the 30 point advantage with 10 seconds to go in the second quarter. Conceivably, Park Crestview starts the second half now with the running clock. Yeah, so uh, you know a lot of a, a lot of things to get determined there on that last call, and you know you wondered out loud too as well. You know the, the timeout, you know whether or not it was the best thing in that moment. And, you know, unfortunately, it looks like you know, it might have been a mistake for the Panthers. So 10 seconds remaining, and the safety call, and it was a hold. I mean, <laughs> oh, everybody, everybody saw it. They were just wondering how long it was going to take for the flag to come out. And, and whether it was in the end zone or not, I thought kind of immediately, like, oh boy, that's not that's not great. But I believe he was in the end zone, and that's a costly mistake there for the Parkway Panthers. Cost them two points, and might cost them some time with the football here in the second half. 37 to seven to score on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard as Parkway's Braden Bruns. Will kick off from his own 20 yard line now. Panthers still with one timeout. Crestview with none. As Crestview lining up almost like an onside kick formation. Now they'll start to space out just a bit. They'll send one guy deep. As Bruns has it teed up. Bruns can do everything he can to kick it anywhere except where he's at, but it was ended up being right to him, so. Dangerous situation here. See if Crestview can do anything with it. Spieth up the middle of the field, breaks it to the 30-yard line. Two seconds remain. That'll give Crestview one shot at the end zone if they'd like it. And you wonder now, is Crestview going to take a shot, or are they just going to go ahead and take the knee and head into the locker room with the 30-point lead? We'll see what the Knights do here. I mean, it's... As well as things have gone passing the football for Crestview, 29 yard touchdown, 22 yard touchdown, 34 yard touchdown, 30 yard, uh, 35 fumble return for a touchdown. Might as well give it a shot here as the Knights 
Hunter in the shotgun, drops back, will just fire it up. He's got a wide open man along the near sideline. He'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Crestview. As Parker Speed grabs the 30-yard touchdown to make it 43 seven nights to end the first half. And you wonder, there had to be some miscommunication that time. Caden Heindel playing well off the receiver. Maybe thought that there was just going to be a kneel down, so he was angling more on the inside. And Crestview takes advantage. Big pass play over the top one more time. Crestview, and I'll tell you what, the last 30 seconds of this quarter in this half, that we've had a lot happen. Crestview trying to go down and score, get stopped on a fumble at the one-yard line. Parkway getting a little bit of room, decides to call a timeout, trying to see if they can't make something happen, get the safety, and then to close out the half, Crestview with the long pass play. 44-7, the extra point good for the Knights. They lead at the halftime break. We'll step aside, come back, have second half action for you. Parkway and Crestview. Knights lead 44-7 over the Panthers here on WLSN. Tonight instant, tonight's instant replay is made possible by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth and communities. As the second half about to get underway here as Crestview has a commanding 44-7 lead over the Parkway Panthers. Carson Hunter, four first-down touchdown passes for the Knights as they'll kick off to Parkway, who won the coin toss, selected to defer, so they begin the second half with the football and due to the 37-point advantage for the Knights, we have a running clock here to begin the second half. The Parkway would like to put the kibosh on with a put with an offensive drive here, but already 15 seconds off the clock on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard as Bryson Penix has the ball teed up. A low squibbing kick bounces and scooped up by the Panthers along the far sideline. Right up the middle of the field, out to the 40-yard line. Nice return by Parkway, and they'll start the second half right there. And you know Parkway's not going to quit. They know that they've got a big deficit here in the second half, and, but that's not going to stop them from trying to come out here, especially on this opening possession. They know they can score. They, they've had some success here and there. It's about being consistent, you know, and Fletcher Smith has been running for his life for most of the night. If you give him a little bit of time, though, he's been able to have some success. So you got to think that that's what they're going to try to come out here and do right out of the get-go. So part, or excuse me, Fletcher Smith in the shotgun with Eddie Nichols to his left, two receivers to each side. They'll hand off to Nichols. He's got a lot of room up the middle of the field. Nichols out to the 40. The 35 makes another man miss. Sprints down inside the 20-yard line. Is tripped up the touchdown savings tackle by Crestview, but a nice run by Eddie Nichols. He got loose for the first time here to start the third quarter in Parkway's in business. They've been trying to get Eddie Nichols going all night long. First play right out of the locker room here in the second half. He's able to pick up a huge play to put Parkway down in wonderful scoring position here as we get going in the third quarter. Ball to 21-yard line just outside the Crestview red zone as Parkway gets their first or second real big play of the night, the 53-yard touchdown by Caden Heindel earlier in the night. The first big play, and Parkway gets the second one right there with Nichols. Smith in the shotgun, sends a man in motion to the near side. It's Logan Green. They'll give the handoff to Green. He's pressured in the backfield, slips past another tackler, but brought down right at the line of scrimmage as Isaac Klein brings him down. By number 24, Mason and Speed. that'll make it second and ten. Tried to stretch the field that time. Nice job, as they've been doing all night. The Crestview defense flying to the football, making sure that they're trying to limit those big play opportunities. 44-7 the score, Parkway. Faced with a second and ten after the long run from Eddie Nichols. As Nichols will come out to the right of Fletcher Smith. Yes. Hunter Reidenauer come to the bottom of your screen as a wide receiver. Smith takes the shotgun snap, hands off to Nichols. He's met by Eggleston in the backfield, coming from the right tackle and just slinging down Eddie Nichols. A nice play there by Bo Eggleston. Eggleston got back in that backfield very quickly. He's able to get Nichols down. Not an easy task, but Crestview been able to do that. And for the majority of tonight outside of the big run we just saw. Third and nine for the Panthers upcoming at the 20-yard line, so they are in the Crestview red zone. Smith will be in the shotgun once again. Two receivers split out to each side. Nichols to his left, takes the belt high snap, pressured, fires into the end zone, looking for Landon May, caught it, touchdown. A 20-yard touchdown catch from Fletcher Smith to Landon May. Touchdowns presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. 
Fantastic grab there by May, makes it 44-13. And Fletcher Smith doing it one more time. We mentioned his ability to throw his receivers open. His receiver wasn't even looking for the football yet when Fletcher Smith let that one go. But May ready for it as it came down. That's what Parkway needed. They had to come out here, try to establish something early. Right down the field, two big plays. Uh, in, sandwiched in between a little bit of the struggle on the on the uh, run game, but either way you cut it, they were able to put seven more on the board and get a little bit closer. Extra point by Braden Bruns is up and good. We'll take a timeout. Parkway cuts the lead to 30, 44-14, 9.06 to go here in the third on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight provided by Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert, or you can find them online at laudix.com. 44-14 the score. Parkway goes on a three-play, 68-yard drive. Capped off by a 20-yard touchdown pass from Fletcher Smith to land in May to cut the lead to two. And, uh, they, unfortunately for the Panthers, that safety there at the end of the first half leaves the running clock going. Yeah, but still, you got to think that, that Parkway's feeling pretty good. It's not like they came out, you know, Crestview hasn't started the substitutions yet. So, I mean, this is still first team on first team, and they showed that they can come right down and score against this night defense. So, they can step up here, maybe get a quick stop. Isaac Klein, trouble with the kickoff return, picks it up at the 10, brings it out to the 24-yard line. And that is where Crestview will begin their first drive here in the second half. Now it's going to be up to the defense. They can come out and try to see if they can't get a quick stop here, a three and out, give their offense another opportunity. And, you know, you never know. Football's a fun game, and, you know, anything can happen. Carson Hunter had a spectacular first half there uh, for the Crest Knights as he had four touchdown passes, one touchdown run there in the first half for Crestview. As he'll be in a shotgun, Klein behind him, two receivers to the bottom of your screen, hands off to Klein, slips past the tackler, gets out to the 25-yard line, so a gain of just a couple there for the junior running back. Makes it second and eight. Crestview, James Lottenizer coach, told us that the, they felt like their, their kind of physical and emotional maturity going to be a big help this year that you know, they lost a couple of one score games last year and I, I would say their physical and emotional maturity here in the, the first half of the early going has kind of been on display a couple of times. Yeah I mean you can you can definitely tell this is not the same team and they've obviously put the work in put the time in and it's paying off here tonight. Klein brings to the near sideline to the 30 Gets very close to a first down. It's going to be just a couple of yards shy. Going to be third and two for Crestview. This is a big third down for the Panthers. They need a stop here. They got to show that they can put a halt to this Crestview offense and let the Panther offense get another opportunity to try to see if they can't get a score. Mason Spieth checks in for Crestview on this third and two. So he'll come to the bottom of your screen. Penix and Klein. Join Hunter in the backfield. Penix to the left of Hunter. Tries to get Parkway to jump off sides. Takes a snap. He'll hand off to Klein. He'll come off left tackle. Swallowed up. Did he get the first down? Nice job there by the Parkway defense as Gavin Dickey from his defensive tackle spot cuts down. Isaac Klein, fourth and two. And looks like Crestview's going to send out the punt unit for the first time. So. Carson Hunter was lobbying. lobbying. He wanted to stay out. He wanted to go for it. Saw a little bit of dejection that time as they said, nope, we're going to punt this one away. So Crestview will send the punt unit on for the first time. It's Bo Eggleston back to punt for the guys in blue. Six and a half minutes remaining here on the Locks Jewelry scoreboard. Snap back. Punt is up high, spiraling kick, bounces right at the 40-yard line. Logan Green will watch it roll to the 31 and a half. And that is where the Parkway Panthers will have their next drive, the second here in the half. Actually, I lied, that was Crestview's second punt of the night. Parkway begins with 6.22 to go here in the third. Their own 32-yard line. You got to be impressed with the offense coming out. A couple of big plays out of Eddie Nichols and Fletcher Smith. Yeah. 
able to get down the field quickly the last time out, trying to replicate that here. Yeah, just three plays on that last touchdown drive for the Panthers. And it's still a young offense out there. Four of your five starters on the offensive line are juniors. Fletcher Smith, the junior, as he hands off to senior Eddie Nichols. He breaks through a couple of tackles, gets to the 37-yard line. So a gain of about five there on first down for the senior running back. Finally brought down. Finally having a little bit of space, finding some, finding some holes. They hadn't been able to do that in the early going. But coming out right out of the gate and, and finding success. You look at Parkway's starting offense, you got four juniors on the offensive line. Fletcher Smith, the quarterback's a junior. Landon May, junior. Logan Green, junior at the wide receiver spots. Colin Langenkamp's a sophomore at the H-back spot. A lot of experience can still be gained here for the Panthers as they trail by 30, 44-14. Smith in the shotgun, two receivers to each side. I'll hand off to Nichols once again. Nichols right up the middle of the field, upper undercut by Isaac Klein, but it's enough for the first down as Eddie Nichols gets going here in the second half. Man, Crestview caught a big break that time. Klein kind of falling down, is able to get underneath Nichols, but if he doesn't, Nichols has an awful lot of green in front of him. Eddie Nichols, a six foot one, 225 pound senior for Parkway. First team all map performer a season ago. 400 yards on the ground, 300 yards receiving at six touchdown carries for Parkway a season ago. Under five minutes to play here in the third quarter. Smith in the shotgun with Nichols to his left. Two wide receivers spin off the each side again. Fake the hand off to Nichols this time. Smith looking over the middle of the field, looking for May. Fantastic grab by Landon May. Went up and caught it at the 30-yard line. Brought down by Hunter Jones, but a great snag by Landon May to put the Panthers in business once again. And don't look now. Here come the Panthers coming out, firing right now. Everything working. This Panther offense is looking like the night offense in the first half. Yes. Carson Hunter, four touchdown passes there in the first half. Fletcher Smith, two touchdown passes by himself. Smith threw 11 touchdowns and 13 interceptions a season ago. Just a sophomore at that time. Now the 5'11 junior in the shotgun. Hands off to Eddie Nichols. He'll go through another defender. Down just shy of the 25-yard line at the 26. Gain of four for the senior as the clock continues to tick here in this third quarter. We talked in the first half, the offensive line of Parkway had to find some way to start slowing down the D-line of, of Crestview. So far, they've been able to do that here in the third quarter. They are winning that battle at the line of scrimmage, and you're seeing all the good things happening because of it. Parkway putting together another drive. Upcoming play will be the fifth off this drive. They started at their own 32-yard line. Smith in the shotgun. Nichols to his left. Takes the belt high snap. Turns right. Fires just out of the outstretched arms of Caden Heindel. Excuse me. That is number five for Parkway. Braden Bruns, the kicker. We called his name in that capacity most often this evening. As the Panthers continue to work in some guys out there for the first time. Caden Berry getting some run at the wide receiver position. The slot to the top of your screen. Yes, Caden Heindel. And runs come to the bottom. Nichols to the right of Smith with a shotgun under three minutes. Nichols gets the handoff and the Crestview defense shoots the gap and cuts down the senior running back. Brings up fourth and about five for the Panthers. Clearly four down territory here for the Panthers. Wanted to see if maybe they couldn't find Crestview sleeping, getting some yards on the ground from Eddie Nichols. Nice job by the Knights defense to be there. Stop that run short. Fourth and six upcoming for Parkway at the Crestview 26 yard line. Panthers obviously gonna go for it. Smith will be in the gun once again. Two receivers split out wide to each side. Eddie Nichols to his left. The first team all Mac running back on fourth and six. Smith. In the shotgun, pressured, rolls to the far sideline. Looking, has to try to get to the first down marker. He's cut down shy of the 20 yard line. And that's gonna give Crestview the football. That time, uh, Fletcher Smith might have taken a little bit too long to decide that he was gonna run it. He was hoping for something to develop downfield. When it didn't, Crestview had caught up to him and he's gonna end up about two yards shy of the first down. So Crestview will begin at their own 23 yard line for their second drive here in the second half, leading 44-14 on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. I'm Garrett Seedike, joined alongside Nate Garlock here from Crestview. On the season lid lifter here of the 2022 season, Crestview, winners of four of five in this rivalry, eight of 10 the last time, these last 10 times these two schools have played. Yes. Crestview, 
Comes out for their first play of the second drive. Hunter, Penix, Clyde in the backfield. Hunter with Penix to his left. Takes a shotgun snap and will hand off to Penix. The sophomore runs off right tackle. He grabs just a couple of yards on the carry. Not a lot going that time as Parkway's defense still trying to play tough, clogging those holes. This running clock, though, really killing Parkway's chances of trying to get back in this game as we are almost at the end of the third quarter already. I'll tell you what, uh, Nate, that uh, Crestview head coach teams lots of times have told us that Bryson Penix is a thumper on the defensive side of the ball. I don't, I'm not sure if I was a Parkway defender, I'd want to see that guy coming at me with the ball either. No, and you know, he, he's taking a bigger role tonight with the, um, with the loss of Jared Harding. He's had to step in and fill those shoes, and he's done an excellent job tonight. Hunter, the pitch decline on the option. He gets the corner to the 40, makes a man miss at the 45, nearly spins out of a tackle. Cut down at the 50-yard line as Eddie Nichols makes a touchdown-saving tackle. But a big gain there by Isaac Klein, one of the first times he's got loose here tonight. And it's a first down for Cressy with under a minute to play here in the quarter. Klein does such a great job of breaking tackles, and that time all sorts of traffic, but was able to weave his way through it. Picked up a huge gain to get out to midfield. 30 seconds remain here in this third quarter with the Knights leading 44-14. Ball right at the midfield stripe as they move towards the Parkway side of the field. Hunter in a shotgun. It's off Leith behind him. Braxton Leith comes up as Hunter will fire deep along the far sideline to the top of your screen looking for Kellen Putnam. Can't make the connection and that will end the third quarter of action here. Crestview leads Parkway 44-14 after three quarters of play. We'll step aside here. It's high school football on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Proudly investing in our youth and our communities. Fourth quarter underway here at Crestview as the Knights lead 44-14 over the Parkway Panthers. Running clock under effect. Second and 10 for the Knights as Carson Hunter hangs in the pocket. He'll sling it to Isaac Klein to the bottom of your screen. Slips past the tackle at the 45-40. Back to the middle of the field. Dives to a 31-yard line. A 19-yard gain for Isaac Klein on second and 10. Gives Crestview another first down and drives them farther into Parkway territory. Getting the ball into Isaac Klein's hands. Big things are happening here in the second half. That's two huge gains for him. And marching this net Crestview Knights offense right down the field. It's been a couple of times they found Klein out of the backfield uh, uh, for easy pitches and catches on the fourth down uh, there at the end of the first half where they needed just a couple yards. They, they knew exactly who they were going to. It was Isaac Klein swinging out the backfield. Hunter in the shotgun. Hands off to Klein. He'll come off to the right side. Past the 30. Approaching the 25. Parkway trying to rip that football out, as I believe that's Landon May, who was trying to strip Isaac Klein, but he held on to the football. Stays in bounds. Isaac Klein does not try to um, shy away from contact, does he? he? He sees those guys coming. He lowers his head. He's the one trying to initiate that contact. He is a tough, tough runner. And he's not a big guy by any stretch of imagination. Five foot nine, 155 pound junior, but he's not trying to make guys miss as much as he's going to run through you. We have that winning ticket. So the Knights faced with third and six here with 10 minutes to go, or approaching 10 minutes to go on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Four wide receivers to the top of the screen. Kellen Putnam to the bottom. Sent a man in motion. Hunter Jones. Carson Hunter fires to the far side of the field. It is grabbed by Crestview. Is that Spieth? Is that Ren Sheets? That is Ren Sheets. Ren Sheets. It's almost time to get the binoculars out here. And it's a good catch by the big man. And that was a great throw by Klein as that went all the way across the field. Hung up there for a long time, but looks like that one's going to come back. Penalty flag laying at the 35-yard line. I guess we await the signal from tonight's officials. 9.30 remaining. Got a hold against the Crest Knights. And we talked about those holds in the first half, and here it is once again, you know, shooting themselves in the foot after a big game. So it'll be third and 5, 10, 15, uh, third and 23 for the Knights here. They'll send four wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Might just see it's the old Hail Mary situation here as Klein comes in motion. Joan, or excuse me, Carson Hunter fires to the near side. 
Yeah, penalty flag is Hunter right now are going to be called for pass interferences. Sheets tried to go up and get the football and make contact with Ryan Nauer, and that'll be a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, even with a 30-point difference and a running clock, that was a pretty obvious pass interference call. Got to call that one. It's, you know, the defender just never really knew that the ball was coming, so just kept running as the receiver stopped, ran right into him, and an easy call for the officials. Yeah, I don't know that he was trying to commit pass interference, but he just got tangled up as, he's, as Ren Sheets was going up for the football, and when everybody in the stadium is looking at that one, <laughs> one matchup, that's a tough one to ignore. And honestly, probably a good thing that it happened, too, because Sheets had some space there. Probably yeah. would have ended up coming up with that catch. So it's one of those two. It's a penalty, but it's not an automatic first down. Just gives some yardage back, and, you know, it did prevent Sheets from coming up with a bigger play. So instead of third and 23, it's third and eight now with eight minutes to go in tonight's ball game. 44-14, Crestview at the advantage. Carson Hunter sends Penix in motion to the top of your screen. He'll roll to the left. He'll turn, fire, another penalty flag. Pass nearly caught, but it's broken up at the last minute. But a penalty flag is Derek Wagner, the sophomore for Parkway, defensive end. Limps, tries to get back to the sideline. He's going to stay in the ball game, though, but now Parkway will send a defensive lineman in to sum out for Derek Wagner, but another penalty flag. And they've, they've really come at kind of inopportune times here tonight for the Knights. And I believe that one's going to be another hold. And, it, and it's an interesting because, you know, third and eight, you know, it was a pass incomplete, would have brought up fourth down. But it looks like Parkway is going to accept, so make this third down a little bit longer and, and hope that you can hold them one more time. So it'll bring up another third and long here, third and 18 for the Knights. And we've seen them convert these a couple of times. They've had some, they've been backed up a couple of times and really hasn't affected them. Yeah, usually, you know, when you're talking about teams, you don't think they have third and 23s and third and 18s in the playbook, but the way that Crestview's playing tonight, I think they might. And, you know, you, right there, a little bit better of a pass. It would have been another conversion. Tried to find Bo Eggleston up the seam. Eddie Nichols went up to try to tip it. Now standing at the 24-yard line, stretching out his right calf, it looks like. It's, you know, it's, a, it's still a warm night. Maybe not as conditioned as you'd like. And, uh, you know, you could. You, you, the coaches will tell you, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. But and these early you can't season, get to everybody. yeah, and these early season games, they're, they're difficult. Oh, the and they fumble loose. A uh, handoff to Eddie Nichols, scooped up by Crestview's number 32, Braxton Leaf. He grabs it, and the Knights are going to have fantastic field position after Eddie Nichols coughs up the football as he got cut down, lost the handle on it, and Leaf pounces on it inside the 10-yard line. And another costly turnover by the Panthers right in the shadows of their own end zone this time. Crestview's going to have an opportunity to go out there as it looks like they're working on one of the Panther players, maybe has a cramp of his own as the trainer's going to come out and check on him. Yeah, so the trainers comes out, trainers come out and check on this Parkway Panther. 4-18 remaining here in tonight's ball game. 44-14, the score we got on the scoreboard with a 29-yard uh, touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putnam. Extra point was good, making it 7-0 at the 928 mark of the first quarter. Crestview then got a one-yard touchdown run from Carson Hunter, makes it 13 to nothing. Two-point conversion made it 15 nothing as Kevin Dickey, the injured Parkway Panther. Crestview added in the second quarter a 21-0 advantage. 22-yard touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Ren Sheets. The extra point made it 22-0. 28-0 was the score with a 34-yard touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Kellen Putnam. Two-point conversion was no good. 35-0 the score went after a 38-yard fumble return by Garrett Yinger. And then a swing for the Knights, a safety with 10 seconds to go in the second quarter. Then they get the kickoff return back to the 30-yard line, and they throw a touchdown pass from Carson Hunter to Parker Spieth. Extra point made it 44-7, and then Parkway got on the board 44-13, a 20-yard pass from Kent Fletcher Smith to Landon May, and that's how we got to our 44-14 advantage. Looks like Chris, you got a mix of JVs and varsity players as Isaac Klein goes off tackle right side. Three yard touchdown run for Isaac Klein. Touchdowns presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs as he got the handoff from Levi Grace to make it 50 14 on the three yard touchdown run from Isaac Klein. And I know as you look at the scoreboard, it's going to look pretty one sided. 
as Crestview has the big lead, 50 to 14. But I really think the swing was right there at the end of that first half. What looked like maybe be pretty insignificant that nine-point swing where we saw Parkway come up with the turnover down there. You know, try to push it out, and then they have uh, the safety. Then they give up the touchdown. So a nine-point swing right there would have made it 30. It would have been 35-7 going into halftime. Coming out, no running clock. You saw what Parkway did. That's 35-14. And we're not nearly as deep into this game, and Parkway has a whole new lease on life back then, but that nine-point swing loomed very large as we got into the early part of the second half. Extra point by Hayden Fair. It's up and good. 51-14. Crest through the advantage. We'll step aside. It's high school football here on WOSN. Season 18 of Sports Report started on Friday night at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive high school football coverage around all season long. It's Fridays at 10 on WTLW. It's the 18th season of the Sports Report returns. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Nate Garlock. 51-14, the score on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard as Crestview holds the advantage over the Parkway Panthers. As we told you earlier, Crestview's won 4 of 5 in the series and 8 of 10. It looks like they're going to add to those numbers tonight with this 51-14 advantage over the Panthers. As Bryson Penix has the ball teed up, ready for the kickoff. Parkway sends Alec or Logan Green, excuse me, and Caden Heidel back deep to return. Short kick, corralled by number 53 for Parkway. Down by number 53, Riley Bolton. That's Riley Bolton on the kickoff recovery for Parkway. Ready for that? Parkway will start at the 43-yard line as they'll begin their drive here in the fourth quarter. Looks like we'll get some new faces in for the Panthers along the offensive line. Fletcher Smith back in the shotgun. Derek Wagner in on offense for the first time tonight, it looks like. Still seeing Callan Langenkamp here to the bottom of your screen. Parkway didn't have a, or excuse me, Fletcher Smith Looked like a little miscommunication as the Panthers will call timeout. 51-14 the score. A lot of optimism and excitement for this Crestview football season, Nate. And I think after this week one performance, excitement and optimism was, were probably two good words for, for the start of the season. Yeah, you know, this team really felt like they had unfinished business from last year. And I think that that's really kind of been an overarching theme um, throughout the entire offseason, getting into the summer, summer summer hours, all the two-a-days, everything that they've been working for. They knew that they knew they were a better team than their record said last year. I think they showed that in that playoff game against LCC where they took them right down to the wire. You know, and they really wanted to come into this season, take that next step, move up up towards the top of the conference, you know, and really see if they can't make a, a deep tournament run. And from everything that we're seeing tonight, I have no reason to believe that they can't do that. They, they look really good on defense. Offensively, everything seemed to be clicking. Carson Hunter looks to be an absolute weapon. They have receivers. They got speed. You know, Klein did a great job in the backfield. And again, they did all this you know, without Jared Harding, who was going to be a big part of the offense. He went down early, about the second or third play with that ankle injury. Hasn't played tonight, and they still were clicking and all cylinders on offense. That they were as Parkway comes back to the field at the 43-yard line. Smith hands off to Logan Green, who takes his first carry, second carry of the evening. Gets out to the 43-yard line. Eight of five. And really, Nate, Cressy was insistent that their offensive and defensive lines were going to be key for, for, the, for the entire season, not just tonight, but they, they felt like, you know, they needed to rebuild a lot of starters, that if they could be cohesive there, that would lead to some success for them and I think we've seen it on the scoreboard. Yeah, absolutely. The defensive line has been wreaking havoc all night long. As you see one more time right here, getting into the backfield almost on cue. As Fletcher Smith did a great job getting rid of that football. But on the opposite side as well, they gave Carson Hunter lots of time. He was able to set his feet not on the run for most of the night, and that led to a lot of their big plays. So that line really established themselves tonight on both sides of the football. Landon May with a reception for the Panthers. will make it third and one with... Just over two minutes remaining in tonight's ball game. 51-14. Knights with the advantage on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Smith in the backfield. 
looking to the near sideline, looking for May once again, tries to drop it in the bucket, couldn't get there, but a pass interference call on Mason Spieth is going to give Barkway a nice advantage. It's going to give him at least a first down, but uh, nice drop in the bucket there to land in May, just couldn't connect with the pass interference from Spieth. It's right, move Parkway in deeper into Crestview territory. And, and no team's perfect. And if the one thing you kind of walk away from is, you know, maybe that secondary needs a little bit of help moving forward. We've seen them to give up some big pass plays, you know, not be able to win those one-on-one -on -one balls. Now, some of that is the fact that Jared Harding is out. He would typically be back there in that free safety position. But other than that, you know, there's really a, hard, a lot of, um, it's really hard to find any other spot of this Crestview team on both sides of the ball to really knock. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you mentioned, you know, you're, in week one, you're, you're working a guy that Jared Harding you thought was going to be a big part of that defensive backfield without him. Uh, they've, they've hung in there pretty well. Smith in the pocket, fires, caught at the inside the 10-yard line as Caden Berry makes his first reception of the night. That's another first down for the Panthers with one minute remaining in tonight's ball game. At the 15, Parkway, no huddle, two receivers to each side of the field. Smith at the shotgun. Takes the snap, drops back to pass. Smith flushed from the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. Gets through a Crestview defender inside the 10. Shoved out of bounds. Ball loose. Did fumble. And it looks like Parkway kept it. As the official says, continue to run the clock with 30 seconds to go. Inside the 10-yard line. Makes it second and four. Parkway playing to the final zeros. That's what you love to see. Fletcher Smith that time lowering his head, trying to pick up. And we're going to have a timeout by Crestview with 17 seconds left to go. And, you know, there, there is a, there's a, a rivalry here between these two schools. You know, James Lotzenheiser, the Crestview head coach, he won't say they're playing Parkway. They're playing Rockford. Uh, we're going to try to catch up with James after tonight's game, and I'll be surprised if he says Parkway. You know, we, we really gave it to Rockford tonight. But, uh, you know, they don't want to let Parkway in the end zone either. They don't. As much as Parkway, you know, probably wants to put another touchdown on the board or at least almost treat this as a practice. Like, hey, we've got a couple shots at the goal line here. Uh, let, let's figure out what works, what doesn't work, where we need to work. And Crestview on the flip side saying, I, I don't want it to be 51-20. I want to beat you 51-14. And, you know, we talked about that at the beginning, you know, these rivalry games, week one, what kind of makes week one a little bit special as teams have started to kind of try to make, you know, before you see week 10, right, that always be the rivalry yeah. week. It seemed, and it seems to be shifting now to week one. And, and that's what makes these decide. This is a trophy game. There is a traveling trophy that comes um, along with the victory. It's sitting, it was sitting up here in the press box behind us not too long ago, you know, there is something to play for here, even though it is week one. And, you know, it means a lot to these kids, the communities, you know, the bragging rights. And that's why you see, you know, timeouts here. We've, we've seen some other things tonight because this means something. And, and, you know, they take a lot of pride in coming away with a victory here. And Crestview does not want to let Parkway score. So the ball at the nine-yard line, second and four for Parkway. Fifteen seconds remain in the ball game. Fletcher Smith in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Look left, keep it himself, runs right up the middle of the field, brought down with five seconds to go. And that will do it. The Crest Unites victorious over the Parkway Panthers. They'll take home the traveling trophy between these two schools. Crestview takes down Parkway 51 to 14. We'll step aside, we'll come back, try to catch up with Crestview head coach James Lotzenizer down on the field as the Knights victorious over Parkway 51-14 here on WOSN. Back here at Crestview High School, wrapping up a 51-14 victory for the Knights over their rival, the Parkway Panthers. And Carson Hunter had seven touchdown passes a season ago, Nate Garlock, and had four tonight to start off a pretty good season. Yeah, you know, the the way that they started tonight is pretty much ideal. You know, you can tell that they put the time, they put the work. We talked about it a lot during the broadcast. They went out and they executed every facet of the game. There really isn't a whole lot when they start breaking down film that they're going to be upset with. And, and we mentioned that James Lawson, the Crestview coach, had told us that, hey, 
uh, the offensive and defensive lines are going to be key. You saw that tonight, and things went well for the Knights. Yeah, both sides of the ball. The defensive line, they wreaked havoc all night long. They were in that backfield. They were causing all sorts of problems. You know, Fletcher Smith just did could not find time. When he did, you saw some big plays, but for the most part, Crestview was able to do whatever they wanted. And then in the offensive side of the ball, the O-line, they gave they gave him all the time in the world. Carson Hunter sat back there and basically didn't get touched unless he decided he was going to pull it down and deliver some contact of his own. So 51-14, the win for the Crestview Knights. They moved to 1-0. Parkway drops to 0-1. For our fantastic crew here at WOSN, for Nate Garlock, I'm Garrett Seawright. Thanks to our fantastic sponsors for bringing you high school football coverage tonight right here on WOSN.